Hey guys. Hey everybody. I'm just going to give a minute for um for you guys to get on there. So if you're watching this later on, I'm sorry. Also sorry for the way that I look. Oh my face is disgusting. <laughs> uh it is morning time here in Ventura, California, and I am starting the day off here at the Starbucks, right there, you can't see it, but it's right there. And I'm going to grab me a cup of coffee, and I'm going to then pick up Stephanie, and we are going to go to the gym and work out and get all healthy. Um, and so next time you see me, I'll be completely healthy, and all my fat will be away because I'm going to the gym. Don't you wish that was the way it worked? <laughs> the one time. Uh, hey, okay, so I got a few thoughts. Okay, we're gathering some followers now, some some watchers. Hey, you watchers. I don't know who you are. And you know what? If you type something down there, I don't see it. I don't know why it works like this. Maybe there's an adjustment. You, you know, but I don't see it until later on after the thing. And then I look back and say, oh, they were asking me a question right there. So if you're asking something, I feel I, I, I encourage you leave a response, that kind of thing like that. Um, so I can see it, but I won't see it until later. So I won't be able to respond until later. But I will respond um, because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm not going to leave you up there. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond. It may be next year, but I will respond. <laughs> okay, so um, I just had a few thoughts for you. Uh, one, the thought that was not included in my pre mental preparation is that... Um, Pirates comes out this week. That's why I've shaved my facial hair into this interesting, I call this my interesting mustache. This is my pirate's mustache. And so, so you'll wonder if you're wondering why I've got that look. It's because Pirates is coming out. So that's this week I'm celebrating. So my thought this morning for you is this, is, uh, okay, so every day since I was four years old, I've had to take this. I know some of you are thinking, is that steroids? What is that? It's not steroids. It is insulin for diabetes. Type 1 diabetic. Since I was four. So when I say things like I hate needles, I hate shots, um, it's not because I'm being wimpy. We added it up one day. It's because that I've literally taken... Uh, since I was four, a minimum of three shots a day. I'm 44 now, so that's 40 years at three times a day at minimum. Um, so someone do the math on that, and you'll find it's like it's like 40,000 shots. I don't know how many, but it's a lot of shots that I take every day. So when I say I don't like needles, it's not because I'm trying to be wimpy, because everyone's like, hey, what about those tattoos? Well, let me just explain this. Tattoos go on the third layer of skin. You got seven layers of skin, as I understand it. They go on the third layer of skin. So it's kind of like a scratch. It's kind of like a scrape. This, these, these needles, and I know it's a small one right here, but you take 48,000 of these, or however many that is, and it starts to add up, and you start to not like it. So when I say I don't like shots, it's because I've had too many shots in my life. Um, and so, you know, as you get older, uh, it's like shots, 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 shots. And the party changes to shots, 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 shots. <laughs> and it's not as exciting anymore. Uh, but it does keep you alive and you don't have a headache in the morning. So, listen, here's the thought is that based off of this right here, this insulin, this insulin was uh, created, established, invented by somebody um, as a result of a problem. The problem was in a diabetic, a type 1 diabetic, um, the, the pancreas uh, does not, I'm, I'm pointing it right here as if this is where your pancreas goes. I have no idea really where a pancreas is. I just know it's in there. It's somewhere in the internal torso uh, area. Uh, the, t the pancreas doesn't work. It's not producing what it needs to produce. And what happens is in a, in a normal functioning body, if it's functioning right, is that if you eat, when you eat carbs, when you eat sugars and stuff, your blood sugar, the sugar levels in your bloodstream, they go up. And then so what happens is your pancreas produces this insulin stuff and the insulin, uh, the insulin, I'm sorry, I was checking something. The insulin 
will will uh, will t bring it down. It naturally brings it back down, and so you live at a level, uh, a steady level. Now, uh, constant constant bad eating over time will cause that to lessen and so it can't fight it as much and that's where you get like type 2 diabetes most type 2 diabetes is is caused as a result of not being uh, not not being good with your diet and not 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 thinking healthy and so what you do is is you push it so far that it's it's getting beyond repair so you have to have an additional insulin type thing to push this back down so this is your blood sugar level the the, the blood uh, the sugar level in your blood and it's going up, it's going up and up. Pancreas says, no you don't. I'm going to bring you back down. And it crawls up there, produces some insulin and shoo, it crawls back down. So in a type 1 diabetic, what happens um, is that your pancreas does not produce that insulin and so it doesn't bring it back down. And so, what some genius came up with, our genius is, I don't want to leave anybody out, is this. This is what your, an equivalent to what your pancreas produces. And so the only way to get this in your system when your blood sugar goes up is with this and then you clink, you stick yourself and you shoot it in there and then the the insulin brings it back down this is the medical study I'm learning you in a whole new way today so that's what happens it brings it back down and hopefully it stays at a level if it goes too low you're in trouble if it goes too high you lose eyesight uh, uh, your, your your feet your all that stuff like that so you try to do it in level it's diabetes isn't, isn't good it's it's meant to, it's meant to kill you and so over time it starts to wear on your system well Here's the thing is that a lot of people hear about this or like a type 2 diabetic will have pills sometimes and won't have to take shots, but some have to take shots. Um, and a lot of times I see diabetics and they're eating horribly, like they're just shoving all kinds of junk food in their mouth. And I lived that lifestyle for a long time. Through my 20s and my early 30s, I was that guy. I would just, I, I just didn't, because I, I, I felt like... I, I felt like um, that that I didn't I didn't ha I didn't feel bad on the inside, and so since I didn't feel bad on the inside, I uh, things must not be bad. But the problem was things were bad. They, they, it was just it wasn't showing up yet, and it wasn't show. But my blood sugar was way too high, and so what people will do sometimes is they'll eat bad, and the doctor will say you need to bring these blood sugar levels down. And instead of adjusting the bad behavior, which is the eating wrong, which is the 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 kind of um, thing that brings it out of control, what they do is they will rely on this. They'll say, well, you know, that's why God created insulin, and so I'll just take more insulin more medicine so that way it balances my wrong behavior out and that's not a healthy way to live because eventually um, this trucks about to run in my Jeep eventually what happens is you need more and more and more and more and then you start to become immune to the things that you are putting in your body and it it wears you out it wears your internal system out and death eventually catches up so the answer is not is the answer is not more medicine in our life so that way it can balance it out the answer is doing healthy things and excluding ourselves from the unhealthy things the unhealthy eating the un why am i saying all this I, I know i'm not i'm i'm not uh you know a fitness trainer that's trying to get you motivated to go to the gym and eat right and stuff like that um although i i do want you to do that because it's better for you and your family long term my motivation here is this i think we as Christians, and I'm all, I'm talking to my Christian friends here. Um, if you're not a Christian, then then I want you to at least listen to what this should be in this belief system, what we should be living like, and and I want you to hear hear the perspective from a Christian and from a believer saying this. We as Christians, we have a thing called God's grace. God's grace and God's mercy is a lot like this. It's not a bad thing. It is an amazing, great thing. Matter of fact, we can't have access into a relationship with God without the grace of God. That's what gives us access. And His grace was what allowed Jesus, His Son, to come down and, and allow Himself to be murdered on a cross and then and then raise from the dead um, and, and, and pay for all of our sins. But, but the thing is, there's still a sin nature in us. 
the pancreas isn't working. See, we don't have within us the thing that produces the sin level to come down on our life and to make us balanced out. We don't have that. And so what God does is he gives us his grace and he gives us the, now the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now does reside within us. And, and but, but what we do a lot of times is we'll, we will say since we have God's grace, we don't have to do the right things and because God's just going to forgive us and things are just going to work out. Why? Because God is a loving God and God cares for us and he wants this to work out for us. And the problem with that, guys, is it's not untrue that God will forgive us. God does forgive us. It's not untrue that God's mercy will reestablish us the, the, the thing is, we're losing health in our life. We're losing time in our life when we only are, only are focusing on what God will deliver us from because we choose to do wrong and what he gives us permission to do uh, rather than what he gives us permission to be free from. And I think our focus on grace a lot of times is I have permission from God to do anything. It is a license to do anything I want to do um, because I don't feel the inside results. Like me in my early, in my 20s and early 30s, I didn't feel the unhealth, but eventually it showed up. Eventually I ended up having heart surgery. Eventually the things started to deteriorate on the inside and I had to tighten up the screws or die. Um, the wages of sin is death. Regardless if you have God's grace or not, the payment that you'll receive and I'll receive for wrongs is death. It eats away, it steals, it kills, and it destroys. And that's the work of the devil. John 10.10 10 said this, I've come, Jesus was saying, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. But the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, he actually said it in reverse, but that's what he said. And so you can track those things that sin and defining sin because people are like, well, what is sin? I don't know if I'm sinning. Let me tell you something. If you are, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Christ, you know what sin is. Okay. We don't have to have a list of it. You know, there's an internal compass on the inside that is telling you when you are doing the right or wrong thing. And it's funny how sometimes we can pray for what is the right thing? What is the right thing? What is the right thing? But as soon as we start doing the wrong thing, we can hear clearly the inward voice of the Holy Spirit working in our lives saying, no, why? Because this function is to lead us, to guide us, and to direct us and and on the inside we have something that tells us this isn't right and so if you're involved in sin missing the mark wrong in your life you're gonna know it there's gonna be something on the inside of you that indicates it we don't need a list of rules we don't need a ten commandments we have it written on our hearts now and so when we start to do things that are sinful, sinful in our life, that are wrong in our life, what it's going to produce is death. And we can sit there and say, oh Lord, I just thank you for your grace because your grace is going to balance this out. But a true mature believer will stop relying so much or stop focusing their reliability so much on the grace as they will on just excluding yourself from the wrong. Now, there's nothing we can do to work ourselves into perfection because us at our best, it's still not going to be perfect enough. That's why God does give his grace. That's why God does it. But but we should, there should be something that strives on the inside of a believer to cause us to want to not do wrong. Why? Not because we're trying to qualify for God, but because this is our only life, man. This is what we have. And, and anything that we do wrong, the stuff that we uh, uh, attach ourselves to is either adding to us and the others around us or taking from us and our life and the others around us. And wrongs will always take from. They won't give back. And and this is the only time we've got 450,000 years from now you'll still be in existence but this season of your life will not there's gonna be a moment when we step every one of us from this realm to the eternal realm and when we step into that eternal realm we'll look back and we'll never be able to have these moments again so let's not cut this short let's not regret in that side of things let's not regret the stuff that we were doing down here or that we didn't get accomplished down here because 
we were focusing too much on what we can get away with and God's grace and his mercy is going to uh, it, it's going to, to, to forgive us for that yes hear me to say yes God's grace will forgive you God's mercy will and we all mess up I'm not talking about the the mess ups and the, the I'm, I'm talking about the intentionality of just doing wrong and saying it's okay it's not okay to keep eating the sugary foods and the unhealthy foods and rely on the insulin to bring me back down to level. I will always need this insulin. I'm going to need it unless God manifests healing in my body before I move on to the other side. I'm always going to need this insulin. And I praise God and I thank God for this insulin because it helps balance me out. But my behavior will indicate how I live my life. Whether I choose to live healthy or whether I choose to live unhealthy and just say insulin will bring it down, medicine will numb this problem. Medicine is not the answer in this case. The answer for me living a joyful, peaceful, happy life is going to be me deciding to do the right thing. Today, I'm asking you to decide to do the right thing. I have this message on my heart for a reason. I woke up with this for a reason, and I believe there's at least one person out there that's watching this, and you're saying, that's me, dude. I've been just getting away with stuff um, because I'm relying on, 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 on God's grace to just let me off the hook. But that's not what God's grace is there for, to let you off the hook. God's grace is there to deliver you from the thing that you're struggling with, the thing that keeps you bound, the, the stuff that keeps pulling you back. Rely on God's grace to set you free from that rather than give you permission to do that. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If it doesn't, go ahead. Uh, message me. If you don't like this message, um, that's fine. I know a lot of people do not subscribe to this kind of belief, even inside the Christian uh, uh, um, uh, belief system. That's that's okay. I'm not saying that I, I have all the answers. I'm not saying that I know all the answers. I know what I know, and um, I'm like Beetlejuice on the Howard Stern Show. I know what I know, and that's it. Okay, so Baba Booey, you guys have a great day. See ya. Bye. Let me just figure out how to... Okay.